we have a lot to do today. I hopefully haven't made this too long of a lesson, but it's a fun one. <laughs> so um, just to make sure you have everything, you need a piece of drawing paper. And I have an 11 by 14 piece of drawing paper uh, from Strathmore. This is 70 pounds. You don't want it to be too thick. You also need construction paper. Um, and we are going to use the rainbow colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. And then we're also gonna use brown and black. So you should have those colors. And then to complement those colors, we're gonna use three crayons, a yellow one, an orange one, and a brown one. Uh, you also need some glue. I always like to use two different kinds of glue. I use a glue stick. And sometimes when you wanna spread it around more, I use the liquid glue, but either one works. You'll need scissors. You need two pieces of regular typing paper or um, printer paper, two sheets. And you're gonna need a circle that's about six inches in diameter because we're gonna trace. So hopefully you guys have all of those. And the first thing we are going to do is take out your two sheets of um, printer paper and your scissors. And we're gonna do some cutting. And this is gonna be real fun and easy. So with one piece of paper, you're going to cut strips going the long way. And you're not going to cut them perfect, but try and keep the cut straight, but angle them a little bit. So for example, you can see how I'm cutting this one. I cut it at an angle, but my cut is about as straight as I could make it. So try hard to make your cut straight, but go in different angles. So you get these um, wedge, wedge-like shapes. So here's my second one. And this is going the long way. Make another one like this. I'll make a skinny one, I think. And I'll make a more of a triangular one. And maybe another little skinny one on the end. And if they're not perfectly straight, don't worry about it. Like with this one, I sort of made a little oops. And so it's got a little zigzag to it, but that's okay. Now you take your other piece of paper and you're gonna do the same thing, only you're going to cut it the short way. So my second piece of paper, I'm gonna cut it again, trying to keep it straight, but making like little wedges. going the short way. Here's my first piece. And you don't wanna make them too skinny, keep them sort of beefy. <laughs> you can see about how thick these are and I'm sort of going at different angles here. And just mix it up, but make straight cuts. Ooh, this one has a really fat end to it, which is okay. And you'll end up with a bunch of strips of paper. Some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. And when you're done cutting them up, you're going to mix them up on your table. So move them around so that they're overlapping it's almost like pickup sticks, the way you're gonna put these. They're just gonna be crossing over this way and that. Um, get your drawing paper. You wanna make sure that your drawing paper, that there's little pieces sticking out through the edges of the drawing paper because you want all this paper to be completely filling the area of your drawing paper. So you can see on my desk that I've got all the pieces of paper that I've cut into strips. 
all mishmashed going this way and that. And I put my drawing paper on top of it and there's little pieces sticking out on the edges. So I know that it's covering everything underneath. So once you get there, where you've got all the pieces of paper going this way and that, and you've got your drawing paper on top, give me a thumbs up and let me know you're ready and I'll show you the next step. All right, Amber, and your friend is ready too? Okay. So now we're going to take our crayons. I'm gonna start with the orange crayon. And the important thing is when you start drawing, you wanna go in the same direction and you're gonna make uh, little shapes that are almost like the shapes you just cut out. So for example, you can see here, I'm starting to draw straight across. And you will see that um, the paper underneath is gonna come through. So it's sort of like a crayon rubbing. And I'm gonna make a shape sort of like that. It's not gonna go all the way to the end of the paper. And it's sort of like a little rectangle. I think I'll make another one going in this direction. And notice as I'm drawing, I'm drawing in the same direction. I'm not changing the direction that I'm drawing. And so that the rubbing underneath will come out really strong. And this one, I think I'm gonna bring all the way to the end and go off the paper. Now, if you happen to touch the paper that's sticking out on the edges and it moves around, don't worry about it because that's okay. And I'm gonna do another spot, maybe up in here, going in this direction. Might go off the edge on this side, but not off the edge on this side. And now I'm gonna switch and I'm going to use my yellow crayon. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but See if I can make a nice pattern here. Fill in some of the places that are still white. So I'm gonna put a, a band of yellow going across this way. And maybe I'll put some yellow through here. I'm not really thinking too much about where I'm putting these, just don't want them all together, that's all. Maybe I'll put a little one here in between. I might fill in this corner. And maybe one little spot over here. And then we have one final color. So wherever you haven't colored yet, fill that in with the brown. And again, the only thing is just make sure you're coloring in the same direction so that you get the, uh, the rubbing of the paper that's underneath coming through looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in everywhere that's still not colored in with my brown. And I'm not trying to color completely, like make it really dark. You just want it to, uh, you just want to rub lightly Make sure you get the markings through. 
And you can see I'm not trying to completely fill in all of the paper. So it's a very loose rubbing. Oops. There you go. And oops, I missed the corner. And once you've finished, it should look something like this. And that is the background. So I'm going to get rid of all the paper underneath. Oh, nice. Everybody's got done a good job with it. All right. So this is going to be the background. And we're going to tilt it so it's portrait, so that it's skinny side. The skinny side goes sideways, and the long side goes up and down. So that's how we're going to use the background. Now, now it's time to start cutting pieces of paper out, because what we we're going to do. Oh, before we do that, let me talk to you a little bit about the artist that we're going to be studying. So we're going to be studying an artist that is um, a Native American. And I have a quick little um, presentation I want to share with you guys. So tell me if you can see, can you see my um, presentation? I think everybody's on mute. I can't see the, uh, the gallery anymore because all I see is my presentation. Yeah, we can see the presentation. Can you see my... <laughs> yes. Okay, so. Yes. The, today we're going to study an artist called Helen Hardin. Now, Helen Hardin was born into a Pueblo community in New Mexico. Um, her mother was a Pueblo Indian, but her father was white. And so Helen Hardin is the name that her parents gave her because her dad's name was Hardin. But since they lived in a Pueblo community, she also had a Pueblo name. Um, and their language is Tiwa, and her Tiwa language name is Tasawie, which means little standing spruce. And so it was a very unique experience for her growing up um, in New Mexico in this Pueblo community. Um, this is her right here, Helen. This is her mother, and her mother's name is Pablita Velarde, and she was also an artist a very famous artist. And for the longest time, Helen thought that she was selling paintings only because people wanted to buy her mother's daughter's paintings. And it was because of her mother's fame and not hers. But then later when she grew up, she um, happily discovered that, yeah, people really liked her paintings and they were buying her paintings because they were nice paintings and not because her mother was Pablita. Now, this little girl here is Helen's daughter, and her name is Marguerite Bagshaw. And she is also an artist now. She's all grown up, and she's uh, painting in New Mexico. When Helen first started painting, her paintings um, look more realistic than the, her later works. So you can tell that these are dancers. Um, she already had this style where everything has lots of angles. You can see lots of triangles and things like that. And her themes were always um, Native American themes. Um, but I, I, you can see in the background, 
again, she has these lines and stuff in the background, sort of like what we just did with our background. Um, as she grew older, her style changed and became more abstract. So it doesn't look very real anymore, but still everything has all these geometric shapes, like these little diamonds and triangles and circles. But notice the color too. This one here is all turquoise and brown and gray. There's no red, there's no green, there's no yellow. This one here is mostly brown and sort of a rusty red, a little bit of yellow. And that's it, only three colors on this one. And the colors for me reminds me of um, Pueblo Indians in New Mexico. She also took colors from um, the costumes that the Pueblos wore when they're doing their ceremonial dances and things. And this is a ceremonial dance, a bunch of ceremonial dancers, Pueblo dancers, and look at their colors. And on the left is um, a painting that Helen did. And notice that she uses all of the traditional Indian colors that she's used to seeing when she was growing up. Um, these are called Katrina dolls. And in their community, they made these Katrina dolls. And if you look at this one, the face of this one, it'll remind you of some of Ellen's paintings because these are some of her later paintings that I really love her portrait paintings. These are portraits and you can see there's two eyes and a mouth. It's definitely a face with hair, but it's so abstract. And look at all the diamonds and, or triangles and squares and lines and zigzags. And this is the one that we're going to do today. So if you notice the background on this, it's sort of like what we tried to do with our background today. And so the next step is gonna be, we are going to make this face. So that's what we're going to do. Let me stop sharing. And if you go back to my desktop, the first thing we, I want you guys to do is get a red paper a yellow paper and a green paper. And you want to line them up so that they're all together. And we are going to get your circle, whatever you have for a circle. And we're going to trace the circle onto at uh, the corner of the construction paper with your pencil, and we're going to cut it out. And we're gonna cut out all three pieces of paper at the same time, because we want the circles to be exactly the same size. So there's my circle that I've drawn, and I am going to cut it out. I'm cutting out the yellow, the green, and the red all at the same time. So you got to make sure they're all lined up and that they don't move. And then we'll cut the circle out. And be careful once you cut it out, not to separate the paper because we're going to make two more cuts after we do this. And there we go. So what I did is uh, once I got about three quarters of the way around, I made sure to hold the circle so that it won't fall apart when I finish cutting the rest of it. And you should have all three circles, all the same size. Once you do that, we are going to cut the circle in half. So we're gonna very carefully so that they don't separate. 
cut the circle in half. And then you're gonna take each half and cut it in half again. So you're gonna make quarters. And this one fell apart. So I'm gonna have to put it back together and make sure it's all lined up before I cut it into quarters. Cut this one into a quarter too. So now we have a bunch of quarter circles. You should take the red circle and put it somewhere near the top of your paper because that's gonna be one side of the person's head. Take the yellow circle and put it below with a little bit of a gap. You wanna have a little bit of a gap between the two. See, they're not quite together and you can glue those into place. And I would say my gap here is, let me see. It's about a quarter inch. I have like a quarter inch gap between the two circles. Then on the other side, we're gonna use two green half circles and we're going to put two green next to the other ones to make our face so just like that and we'll glue those in Now you might find like I did that depending on which circles you chose, they're not gonna make a perfect gap. Like I noticed my, this green circle here um, wasn't cut the same as this green circle here. So I have a bigger gap in the bottom of this one and it's sort of a wedge shape, but that's okay. As long as you've got them separated, the little gaps make the picture look cool. So that's fine. Now we should get some yellow because if you noticed in the picture that uh, the painting that Helen did, she's got a little triangle right in the lower part of the green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take yellow and I'm gonna make sure that I go Past the green circle a little bit because um, the way this little triangle is for her eye, it goes past the uh, side of the face. So I'm going to start my cut, oh, maybe an inch or so beyond the green, and I'm going to make a little triangle. So there's my triangle shape. 
And I'm going to glue it so that the bottom of the triangle is going to touch the bottom quarter, quarter green so there's no gap showing. You see how I brought that triangle all the way down so there's no gap showing at all between the greens. And that's where I'm gonna glue it. And there it's glued. Now let's put in the eyes. So the easy way to do this is grab your black construction paper. I'm going to take my black construction paper and fold it in half. And after I fold it in half, I can make a little triangle on the corner that's open. I'm gonna cut a little triangle and the triangle needs to be small enough to fit inside of the yellow triangle that we just cut out. So I think I'm going to make it, oh, about this big. Let's see if that's small enough. And those are our eyes. So I'll go ahead and glue those in. Now we should make the nose. If you look at the, um, the reference, it's got a bunch of little lines, but we're just gonna make one straight strip. So get your purple, your purple paper, and we're going to cut a strip that's going to fit in this little gap right here. So you wanna make that strip go at least a quarter of the way down the bottom half circle. So see where my finger is. You want it to end right about there and starting on the top. So I'm just gonna lay my purple paper next to it. And I'm gonna probably start cutting right in here to make sure it's long enough, make a cut. And then just make a skinny piece that'll fill that gap. So it's probably about this wide. Let's see how that looks. Looks pretty good. I'll glue that in.
And if you notice on Helen's uh, painting, there's a bottom to the nose that goes sideways. Or actually that's the mouth, I guess, goes sideways. So we're gonna make another little strip that's gonna go sideways and that's not gonna be very long. I'm gonna make it about the same thickness. And this is gonna go sideways down here. And now the face is done. And I wanted to make sure everybody got the face because from here on in, you can do whatever you want to finish off the painting. If you remember what Ellen's painting looks like, she does have some um, hair that's black on both sides. Um, there's probably, I would call these feathers. It's got three feathers coming off of the top. And then she's got this um, beautiful decorated um, shawl type thing that's going on both sides. Um, so it's up to you how you make these patterns. You can follow along with the painting or you can do it in completely uh, different, unique, personal style if you want. Um, if you want to just follow me, uh, you can follow me too, because the next thing I'm going to do is probably put in some hair. So find my black paper. The way, to, the way I make sure that I get the curve right when I want to put this in here is a little trick. You can sort of feel the edge of the um, where the paper is. And I sort of crease it with my fingernail. And I make a fingernail mark. And if you can't, don't worry about it. Just do the best you can to get that arc. Let's see how close I came. I sort of scored that with my fingernail. I found the edge of the paper. See how close I was. Uh, a little off. I was okay up here. I guess I went off right in here. Yeah. It's gorgeous. A little off right there. So that'll be the hair on this side. And if you get little gaps, that's perfectly fine. If you look at Helen's painting, you can see through the parts of the body and the face and stuff to the background that she's got painted back there. So if your um, piece of paper doesn't completely cover and there's a little gap and you can see through to the background, that makes it sort of interesting, I think. that's. That's the way her painting is too. You can see right through to the background in some places. So I've got the one side. And actually I'm looking at her painting right now. And I'm noticing that 
on the green side, there's a little strip right here. You don't completely see the green circle because there's a little strip of a different color. So I think I'm gonna do that too, but I'm gonna make it purple. So actually what I'm gonna do is, let's see. So that's sort of, I would say in here. So I'm just gonna use my yellow. So I get the exact shape because I want it to be like a little sliver right there. And I'm gonna take this shape, put it on my purple paper and trace it and cut it out. And that should fit right in here. Yep, pretty good. I'll glue it in. And now I'm gonna come back with my black Let's see. Looks pretty good. I just discovered something. If you don't want to use your fingernail, you can use the pencil. I was able to find the, the construction paper underneath with the pencil tip, and I was able to trace it through the construction paper, which is useful. So here's the other hair on the other side. And I think my next step would be to start on this red right underneath. It's like um, a little strip of red that goes under her face. It's almost like a collar on um, whatever she's wearing and it's red. So I'm gonna get my red paper and it's where I cut the circle. If you can find the piece of paper that you cut the circle out of, that should fit the green because it should be the same curve. So it fits right here. So now I'm gonna take my, my pencil and I am going to Draw, let's see, I think I'm gonna go this way a little bit. Because what I wanna do is draw a line from the corner of the green circle going sort of diagonally away. And then up here, just a little bit below the face. I'm gonna go diagonally away again for her shoulder line. 
And I'm making these really long lines, even though the red that's on the painting is not that big, I'm making them really long lines right now. And I'm going to cut that out. And you'll see the reason I'm doing that. So this is going to fit right in here. And if you look at the painting, it's just a thin little red, it's a very thin little red um, collar. So I'm gonna cut this out so that it looks sort of like that. So it should be about this wide. I would say it's about this wide. So if you want to make it wider, because you want to, that's fine too. There we go. Now glue that in. Oops, did I do that on the wrong side? I did, I glued the wrong side, okay. <laughs> At least glue dries clear. So the reason I did that is because now, if you see the painting, this line from the collar going this way is what we're going to uh, create. Down paper. So I'm going to take my brown paper and I think what I wanna do is if you look at the painting, this part comes around sort of like this. You notice I'm cutting out the red paper, even though we're gonna put a brown strip there because I want to get the shape to match since I use this. So this, this is the shape I want, but I want it in brown. So I'm going to trace this now onto my brown paper and cut it out. I think if I line up the straight, if I line up the straight edge with the straight edge, it'll probably be easier for me. And I need to trace this shape because this is the shape that'll fit on the right hand side of the jacket or whatever it is that this person is wearing. So I'll trace this piece of paper. And once I cut it out, it should fit perfectly. And I think I'm going to leave a little itsy bitsy tiny gap between the red and the brown. So you can see through to the background. I sort of like the way that looks. So I've decided that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna leave a little gap between the red and the brown. Just like that. Okay. 
And now let's get some orange. And what we want to do is we want to start making these, um, the color and everything on the left hand side. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, find one of my uh, quarter circles that I haven't used. And this curve right here on this quarter circle should help me make the angle so I can put the sleeves for this side. So I am going to put this here. And let's see, I want, let's take another look at our reference picture. What I want is I want it to come from here and sort of curve out along her right shoulder and down her body. So that means it should be coming from right about this corner of the yellow. And it's gonna curve down this way like this. So first I'm going to line up my circle. I'm gonna trace this arc for the outside of the circle. And then bring this end sort of at an angle like that. And on this side, I need to find where this, remember where the red and the brown go. You wanna line up that line where the red and the brown go. So let me see if I can find that under here. I can sort of pick it out with my pencil point. That works better than my fingernail. I can follow that line along the brown. And so now I've got the shape that I want to go into this space right here. That's to the left of the face. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out and let's see how it fits. This is um, easier than figuring out a puzzle because you're making your own puzzle pieces basically to make it fit. I wish I could do that with puzzles, <laughs> but that would be cheating. Okay, so that's pretty close, not bad. At the bottom here, I wanted to, I think I wanna follow this line of the brown. So I'm just gonna make a line sort of following this curve of the brown. I'm gonna draw a line going up this way. And I'll cut that piece out. Sort of like that. Then looking at our reference again, you will notice that there's a bunch of green right here. There's green and then it goes red. So what I just cut out right here, the bottom part, we're gonna keep orange, but this little sliver in here, I am going to cut out and then trace it onto a piece of green paper. So it's like a little strip.
like that. And this piece here, I wanted it to be green, right? And the bottom part, we're gonna keep orange. So this one, I'm going to get my green paper, trace it, cut it out, and then we'll be ready to glue it. So I'm going to trace this out. It should be almost the same, yeah. And you can keep doing this with every shape that's um, on your collage in order to make it fit. Or if you don't care about making it fit exactly, you can just ran, just cut out any shape you want and that's fine too. I mean, you don't have to perfectly copy what I'm doing. But I sort of want my collage to look a little bit like Helen's painting. So I'm sort of following her um, colors and everything. So now I've got the green. And actually the green strip is in like three different strips. So I think maybe I'll cut mine into strips too. So I'm gonna take this green and I'm gonna cut it into thirds. One, two, and three. And when I glue these on, I think I am going to leave a little gap between the strips so you can see you can see a little bit of the background that we just that we colored in earlier. I think that'll look pretty cool. There's one. Trying to be really careful not to glue the wrong side again. Two. So we got three, and then we'll put the orange piece down. So, one last thing I want to show you, and then you can keep working on your piece. You can put little triangles in here if you want, like little black triangles, if you look at the picture. She's got all these triangles right in here. But let's cut out at least one of these feathers. So I'm going to get my blue. And I'm just gonna make a little skinny triangular shape. And I just guessed at the size. Let's see how close I got. Okay, that's pretty good. So let me glue this here. The one feather and one feather coming out of her hair. And I think I'm going to put a orange one.
That's pretty good. And then maybe a brown one. The brown one's smaller. I think in her painting, her top feather is sort of small too. So there's lots of details you can be working on in here. Um, if you want to finish down here, we can put something here at the bottom like this too, to finish this part off in here. And all the little details you want to put in here, you can with little pieces of paper, but I think we are out of time. So just keep working on it. We, this is the main part, but there's lots of little details you can be putting in here. Um, keep checking to see um, how you're doing against the reference. And I'd love to see the finished results when you're done with it. <laughs> <laughs>